One brand with two souls, that's what Fiat calls itself nowadays. And what that means for the likes of you and I is that it can make fun and desirable models like the 500 and the new 124 Spider, but it can also do the sensibility thing with the Panda and now with this, the Tipo. You might recognise the name from the original Tipo of the 1980s, a hatchback which was designed to compete with the likes of the Volkswagen Golf. Being Fiat's first family hatchback since the Bravo, this new one aims to do pretty much exactly the same thing and positions itself as one of the most cost-effective options in its segment. But is it any good? Well, let's start with the positives first, shall we? The Tipo has some interesting design features like a double bubble roof and there's also plenty of space both up here in the front and in the back. Standard equipment includes air conditioning, DAB radio, and a multimedia system with steering wheel mounted controls. Not bad whenever you consider the price. Our car is the range top and lounge trim, which sits above the Easy and Easy Plus versions. Additional kit on this model includes cruise control, rear parking sensors, and this infotainment system with integrated sat nav. All that said and done, there's not really that much about the Tipo's interior to get excited about. The design is slightly underwhelming, the plasticky materials have more than a whiff of cost cutting, and this tiddly infotainment system is only 5 inches. There are smartphones with bigger screens than that, and it can be frustratingly hard to use at times. Again, you do have to bear in mind the cost of the things, but it is still a long way behind most of its rivals. Still, with soft seats this car is more comfortable to sit in than many, and there's also plenty of leg, head and shoulder room, so fitting three tall adults in the back shouldn't be all that much of a problem. Boot space for this hatchback version is a handy 440 litres, which is bigger than the Focus, the Astra and the Golf. You can also have it as an estate version, which might make more sense in terms of space for your money, with 550 litres, which is 110 more than the hatchback. You can have your Tipo with a choice of five engines, two 1.4 litre petrols, a 1.6 litre petrol, or a 1.3 litre turbo diesel. However, it's the larger 1.6 diesel with 118 brake horsepower that Fiat reckons will be the best seller, and that's the one that we've got in this test car. It's the same engine that comes in a lot of other Fiat Group cars, like the Jeep Renegade and the Alfa Giulietta, and it gets the job done reasonably well. It's quick enough and torquey enough to keep up with traffic or on the motorway, and not to 62 miles per hour, taking 10.1 seconds. In terms of drivability, it's not the worst in its class, but it is let down by some slightly stodgy handling characteristics. It never feels that keen to change direction, there's quite a bit of body roll, and the steering is a bit vague and it isn't great either. It is soft and comfortable to its credit, but there is a lot of wind, tyre and engine noise that creeps its way into the interior. As a result, it's not as refined as you might hope and it doesn't make the best motorway cruiser either. There are better cars of course in terms of drivability and also better long distance cars as well, but if all you're after is a straightforward A to B vehicle, then the Tipo will do its job fine, just slightly unremarkably. In happier news, the Tipo's starting price of $12,995 is a serious eye-catcher, particularly whenever you consider that it undercuts virtually every other car in its segment by at least two to three grand. Easy Plus is a thousand pounds more, while even this range top and lounge model starts from $17,995, less than many rivals in mid-spec configuration. This diesel also happens to get the best running costs of the lot, and Fiat says that it can return up to 76.3 miles per gallon with 98 grams per kilometre of CO2. The Tipo is capable in many areas, but doesn't really excel in any of them, perhaps with the exception of cost effectiveness, although we would stay away from the top trims if you want to maximise your bang for buck value. In other words, if you're looking for an inexpensive and reasonably practical runaround then it's fine, but it still has a long way to go to be competitive with the best in its segment. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the inquire button to find out more details about this car or for any other models visit carkeys.co.uk and to watch more reviews click on one of the links on screen now.